learn for free on YouTube. Our ladies are learning how to make up for free on YouTube. That is virtual education. The experiments that he or she is supposed to do when the person doesn't have enough money to build a laboratory for himself or herself. Which makes also reference the fact that Ghana needs open education across the level. Hello everyone here. You are warmly welcome to yet another edition of the Yaz Intellectual Show. My name is Edu Jenfi and I'm here with Nanaba Amua. Well, today we have great, great halls also coming up to debate for us to hear and analyze the issues right here at KNUST. And of course, we have exactly been hearing and seeing for ourselves some of the competitions that have gone on so far and has been absolutely top-notch in terms of their thinking abilities and how they're able to deliver. Okay, so this is the knockout edition. And as he rightly said, we are at KNUST here in Kumasi. Exactly. So we take a very short break here. When we are back, the program continues. Twenty first century design. Made with durable materials. Bristles crafted to reach in between your teeth. Flexible. Allows easy control. Introducing Yaz range of toothbrushes. Made for every pocket. For bulk purchases, call 0302 23. 5294. Yaz toothbrushes, clean teeth, confident smile. Alright, so you welcome back from the break. Alright, so to debate today, we have great halls representing and we have one hall from the University of Education in Winneba. And we have Simpa Hall. Custodians, 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 we stand for greatness. We are poised for action. We are coming to grab the crown. We are coming to make Simpa Hall proud. We've been first in everything. When you talk about academic excellence, we, we excel for the best. Simpa Hall, we are indeed the greatest soul. As our slogan suggests, custodians, we stand for greatness. So we aspire for the greatness in everything that we do. You can't define intellectuals without mentioning Simpa. We are really defined as competent ones to win these intellectuals. We know very well that we are going into this competition to win because we are full of brains. We have the men and the women. So our chances of winning the intellectuals GH is very high because we are so determined for it. Simpa Hall can easily win the intellectual competition. We want to be the premier hall to win this intellectual debate. When with our Spartans behind giving us all what we want, that's the music. We know that Simpa, we will win. We have all it takes to win this competition. And they're also up against SRC Hall from the University of Cape Coast. SRC, we have this motto that exceeding expectations, therefore in everything that we do, we exceed expectations. SRC Coastal has always been the best and we have exceeded expectations as well. We know that our intellectuals are going into this very intellectual debate to bring us the greatest. We are sure and we know that we have a 100% chance of winning this competition. I tell you, SRC Hall has proven in UCT and they can prove in all of Ghana. We believe in extensive training and then proactive measures. Not all halls in Ghana knows about the BP, that is a British parliamentary style of debating. Adequate preparations have been made towards this. 
we are prepared whatsoever means we are prepared in whatsoever capacity. SRC Hall is going to win this intellectual debate competition because of our well-equipped trainers who always train us to unearth our potential in public speaking, in debate and in education. We are empowering ourselves to face this task. SRC Hostel, we are coming into this intellectual debate to win the prize and bring home the crown. SRC Hall, we pride ourselves as the academicians, the intellectuals and the innovators. <laughs> So SRC from the University of Cape Coast, they are coming up against the opponent from the University of Education in Winneba in Simpa Hall. And for the motion, it is a common view that virtual education is the way to go in this fast competing economic world. And that's the motion that we're going to debate on. And of course, uh, we have uh, SRC Hall against the motion and Simpa Hall for the motion. So exactly that's what we're going to do. Okay, so before we acknowledge our sponsors, we'd like to mention our moderators here in the house. Pabna. All right, so for our moderators, we have Professor Goski Alabi. A round of applause for her, please. And we also have with us here Dr. Hosseini Adams. A round of applause for him. So they are our moderators for today. Okay, so this show is proudly sponsored by Yaz Ghana, the caring brand for caring families. They have a wide range of products. They have the toothpaste, they have the toothbrush, they have baby wipes, they have um, facial wipes, they have a whole lot of things. A whole lot of things. And so we are also supported by Capital O2 and Access Bank. Exactly. You have gems in your mouth. You have to make sure you get a Yaz toothpaste. And again, Yaz is proudly uh, supported in this particular noble idea. The first of its kind here in the country. So we are very much privileged to have all of you on board. So for starters, we go for those for the motion. And we once again come Simpa Hall to take us through the motion. The chairperson, panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, fellow debaters, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Emmanuel Dako from Simpa Hall University of Education, Weneba and I rise as a principal speaker to propose the motion for the House. And the motion reads, it is a common view that virtual education is a way to go in a fast competing economic world. Mr. Chairman, before I proceed with my argument, let us take a critical look at these statistics. As put out by IMF on January 2017, Mr. Chairman, they gave some economic outlook projections for various countries in the world, and I will want to quote some of them. For Sub-Saharan Africa, we have 1.6%. For United States of America, 1.6%. Europe, 1.7%. Germany, 1.7%. And United Kingdom, 2.0%. A critical look at these figures tells you how competitive we are in this economic world. And somebody will ask, what is a competitive economy? And then the World Economic Forum puts it simply as a state of being productive. And by productive, we are, we are saying or we are talking about how input translates into output. Mr. Chairman, it will, interest you, it will interest you to know that on top of this ladder has been Switzerland that has topped this competitive economic world for over 10 years. And somebody may ask, what has account for this? And then the World Economic Forum will tell you that it has been the nature of their education system and their ability to create and use talent. So we ask ourselves, what is the way to go in a fast competing economic world if not building our human capacities and tapping into the human resources and making sure that we can all progress at a fast competing rate mr chairman i heard somebody from the audience ask what is virtual education well education as defined by js farant 1980 it is the total process of human learning through which knowledge is imparted faculties trained and skills developed mr chairman the english dictionary defines virtual as a state or something that exists in essence and in effect but may not be in fact mr chairman what this simply means is that when we talk about virtual education we are talking about an online system of education where learners have the ability to assess instructional materials through the use of internet nowadays mr chairman we have the influx of smartphones and we are all assessing smartphones and yet we can learn on our phones and this is what we call virtual education education in a smart way education by the use of the internet or online and mr chairman i would want to state clearly that 
virtual education starts from early childhood through to tertiary level and it can also address formal and informal education such as seminars and short courses and conferences so now somebody will ask what is this whole argument about and i re-echo the motion for the house and it says that virtu it is a common view that virtual education is a way to go not the way which some say that we are bringing an alternative to the traditional brick and mortar classrooms that we all know i would want to state that our argument is premised on the law of alternatives which says that there are always alternatives we choose between our beliefs our habits and the things we do and that the popular quote if a man has no drum to beat he beats his test nature gives us with alternatives mr chairman why it is a common view that virtual education is a way to go and i would want to advance some points firstly mr chairman i would want to quote professor Gosky Alabi, member of Lawe Open University College, when she says that virtual education promotes access to education. According to Education for All, Mr. Chairman, everybody has the opportunity and the right to access education. Yet, according to Professor Gosky Alabi, in 2015-2017, University of Ghana Legon could only admit about 50% of the applicants they receive. That's because the facilities were not adequate so we ask ourselves what happens to these 50 percent do they go waste and how can we be throwing away our human resources in a fast competing economic world mr chairman if not virtual education that provides access to those who cannot access education not because they have failed but because the facilities are not enough mr chairman we ask ourselves from unesco's projection 2017 a, a, an alarming figure of about 142 million people do not have access to education and we ask ourselves is it education for all or education for some and it is very pitiable that even for the few that have access to education this is what they have to go through and in the bosom of virtual education all these things are dealt with <laughs> secondly mr chairman why would we say that virtual education is a way to go in a fast competing economic world we'd want to emphasize that indeed a healthy nation is a wealthy nation and the health of our young children and the learners is very paramount in the educational system yet with a very few that can assess education this is the condition they find themselves overcrowded classrooms and it is very easy to know that this is a, a, an avenue for the transmission of contagious diseases and i would want to remind us of the recent issue that happened last year about Kumasi Academy, H1R1 influenza, and people have to die. And after that issue was recorded, Mr. Chairman, a bereaved family was crying, and the mother said, I only brought my child to school to learn, not to come and die. It might sound pathetic, but this is where we find ourselves. And with virtual education as a way to go, Mr. Chairman, we are providing healthy learners who are learning in the comfort of their homes. And in the outbreak of any infectious disease, they wouldn't be affected. As if that is all, Mr. Chairman, we'd also want to advance certain arguments on the economic gains that virtual education brings. Not all of us can afford Central University College. Not all of us can afford University of Ghana. Just to mention a few. Yet, Mr. Chairman, with virtual education, education is made affordable. And I want to tell you, you can even learn for free on YouTube. Our ladies are learning how to make up for free on YouTube. That is virtual education. Yes, they are learning how to cook intercontinental dishes. That is for free with virtual education. Just in 2013, Mr. Chairman, as recorded by the Herald newspaper, the government of Ghana was spending about 5.1 million to 6.1 million Ghana cities just putting up a single day school. Can you imagine we can save this many through virtual education where we didn't have to put up sophisticated buildings? Just a simple one and we are good to go. And somebody will ask, what are we going to save this money for? I heard somebody from the back say, one district, one factory. And Mr. Chairman, that is the case. The chair of the house, we also want to state that virtual education promotes religious and ethnic diversity. We are in this country where we have instances where Muslims are forced to go for worship and Christians are forced to go for Juma. With virtual education, Mr. Chairman, we are all developing and learning without any force and indoctrination. And that is why from this side of the house, we are proposing that virtual education indeed is 
a way to go and not the way to go. We are only proposing an alternative and based on the law of alternatives, we say that everybody has an alternative. Let's choose between virtual education. Thank you. What you know? Thank you, thank you very much. We now call on the first principal speaker against the motion. Mr. Chairman, panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, dignitaries and lecturers present, co-debaters, fellow students, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Emmanuel Nyanzu Jr. and I am the main speaker for the opposition bench, UCC SLC Hall. We strongly oppose the motion and I quote, it is of a common view that virtual education is the way to go in a fast competing economic world, unquote. Mr. Chairman, when we talk of virtual education, what at all is it? Virtual education simply refers to um, instructions in a learning environment of which a learner and a, student, uh, a teacher are separated from each other. And with this, the teacher provides course content through course management applications, um, through um, the internet, video conferencing, multimedia resources, and others. Now, linking this to the motion, what are is a fast competing economic world. We are saying that a fast competing economic world is the one that is full of competitions, innovations, and creativity, of which um, business leaders and uh, companies look out for a whole lot of competencies in graduates. And with this, we are talking of the personal development. We are talking of the psychomotor development of an individual. With this, we are also talking of good communication skills. With this, we are talking of social skills and behavior. And with this, we are also talking of um, development, interpersonal skills development. Mr. Chairman, this motion is telling us that because it is of a common view, we should rather see virtual education as the way to go. And this is where I ask this question. Should we consider um, convenience over experience? This is what we should put in place. Now, to our stand, we are saying that traditional learning is not or has not become redundant, but all that we are saying from the opposition bench is that Virtual education can only be a subsidiary to the traditional form of learning. And with this, we proudly say that virtual education cannot be the way to go. What at all do we bring in this debate? In this debate, we are going to walk the whole house through historical antecedents of education. We are going to talk about the philosophical needs of existence of education. We are also going to talk about the theory and learning of education or learning and um, with that law too we are also going to prove to the whole house our reasons why we say virtual education is not the way to go and finally consequences of what will happen to us if we see virtual education to be the way to go now to our point mr chairman point number one mr chairman there is no physical contact in virtual education with this virtual education, with this online system of learning, there is no physical um, contact. And for education to be very interactive, for education to be very effective, there should be physical contact, of which a teacher is closer to the learner. And this is where we are saying that a learner uh, learns very well when he gets so interactive and socialized very well with a teacher and other classmates of his or hers. And with this, it it only occurs in the classroom setting and with this we say virtual education is very poor in doing this mr chairman with this we are also telling you that there is this a hidden curriculum and if i talk of this i am talking about um the lessons that are learned informally or unintentionally and this is only done in traditional form of learning and not in virtual education and this includes the behaviors the perspectives the attitudes that the learner has to get i mean the right way of behaving and with this a learner for a, a classical example a child will learn the way to act the way to respect the moral values all these things occur in the classroom setting and we say that virtual education cannot be the way to go with physical contact 
talking of historical antecedents of education from the history, um, the European merchants brought about um, formal education to Ghana. And with this, they trained the, a, a great scholars, of which I'll mention some names. We have Anthony William Amo of Azim. We have Christian Proton of Accra. We also have Philip Keku of Cape Coast. With all these things, through physical contact, they were trained in innovative manner and with creative minds and with that they were great scholars of their time and we say that this type of education should continue and virtual education shouldn't continue mr chairman our second point in virtual education education as contrast and domains of learning are not effective and this is where we tell you that with this form of education interpersonal skills or personal development is very important in our modern way today in the fast competing economic world companies require people with good interpersonal skills how is virtual education going to give me that skills how because if i sit in the comfort of my room assessing virtual education i'm getting the knowledge aspect of it how is my public speaking abilities going to be imp improved how is my communicative skills going to be improved how is my presentation skills and how will there be a permanent change in my behavior and this is where we tell you about the philosophical need for the existence of education where this education seeks to impact or positively into an individual and society and with this we say that cognitive skills affective domain and psychomotor development of an individual can only be done in the classroom way of learning mr chairman our third point with our third point in virtual education there is poor assessment of students this one we are talking of online way of learning Yes, I am in my room assessing virtual education. The learner is, the trainer or facilitator is far away from me. How is he going to know that whatever I am doing, I understand the course material? He doesn't know what I do on my daily basis. And with this, assessing me is very difficult. Though quizzes will be mounted for me, but in the course of the facilitator assessing me it becomes a problem and this is where we say that virtual education shouldn't be the way to go because with a traditional form or setting of education um the learner and the facilitator are so close you you go to your lecturer he explains certain things to you verbally with physical contact and all that so we say that a virtual education is not a way to go last there is absence of law of exercise and effect in virtual education with this we are talking of facilitator creating enough um, room for learners to overlearn and you as a learner learning for the um, learning experience to impact onto you and the society and we say that the traditional way of learning can only do this virtual education cannot do this so mr chairman our points well discussed we've talked about there is no personal contact in virtual education Two, in virtual education, education as contrast and domains of learning are not effective. Three, we are also saying that poor assessment of students. And four, there is absence of law of exercise. Mr. Chairman, okay, panel of judges, our great timekeeper. With thank this, you. we say that we are proud and we have to win this debate. Thank you. Guards. Yes, sanitary pads give you maximum comfort, hygiene, and protection in a resealable pack. We've got Yas Protection. Yes, sanitary pads. Maximum protection, maximum confidence. No worry, we've got Yas Protection. The chairperson, panel of judges. Accurate timekeeper, fellow debaters, ladies and gentlemen, Jade Michael Doe is my name, a supporting speaker for Simpa Hall, University of Education, Winneba. I rise to speak for the motion that it is a common view that virtual education is a way to go in the fast growing competing economy, economic world. Mr. Chairman, it will surprise you to know my opponent came and misled the House on the motion under discussion. That 
alone, is, that alone on itself means that my opponent does not know what we are talking about. Mr. Chairman, as well defined by my principal speaker, I rise to further espouse to all and tell this August how some of the advantages embedded in virtual education. But before I do that, let me be quick to correct some of the notorious impression created by my opponent. Mr. Chairman, he did talk about the absence of inter personal interaction, or as it were, the human interface is missing. It is never true. In virtual education, there is some courses that are done online and others that are done in a situation where the person goes, the, the learner goes to meet the, the, the facilitator. Mr. Chairman, I also rise to talk about the fact that my opponent is talking about hidden curriculum. When you are using the internet, when you are using the internet to do your virtual education, you also learn the habit of typing fast. You also learn the habit of knowing more about the internet, which has become an everyday thing in our fast competing economic world. Mr. Chairman, let me also give some reason to the fact why I believe virtual education is a way to go in a fast competing economy, economic world. Mr. Chairman, for us to say it is a common view, that means some, many people has proposed, many people have proposed this. And let me be quick to talk about some of the proposals that were made here. Mr. Chairman, according to According to Dr. Diallo, Diallo Bakari of the African U Virtual University, he said, virtual education has come to solve many of the challenges in the traditional economy. And look at the many challenges we are talking about here. This is supposed to be a lady studying in a room. She can be a vice president. She could be a minister. With this kind of education, can this person go out there and make any better negotiation for us? No way. Mr. Chairman, as if that is all, L look at this. This is a student who is supposed to sit comfortably, but because of the constraint that comes to the traditional system of education, look at how one has to learn. How can this positively impact? And my opponent is here propounding for this. I'm really shocked, my, 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 Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, this is what is happening in, in SS. First, Pankosu Senior High School. The students are learning on bare floor. Mr. Chairman, is this supposed to be the learning environment? When we have alternative, as my, my principal speaker did talk about, we have alternative. Why don't you enroll on this one? As Dr. Dr. Alabi did talk about. Look, with this, a lot of people are denied access, not because of them not being good. But however, it is because the system cannot accommodate them. Mr. Chairman, let's look at some of the many things that are going on. I talk about psychological effects. Psychological, many of our students, a disadvantage of putting in that, that mode of trauma. How, is it, how does this happen? Corporal punishment comes with our traditional system of education. Sexual abuse comes. The famous sex to scandal. If, can you imagine the kind of trauma this lady will be passing through? That if she's going, a lot of people, but this can never happen in the, in the virtual system of education. Mr. Chairman, I also talk about, I also rise to talk about a quote that was given by Subjecta Makejeji, he said, in fact, virtual, virtual school is the next big solution in education that is surely going to change the way education is delivered to its recipient. Mr. Chairman, this is an educationist and a researcher. He has, he has put in together the, the traditional system of education and then the virtual system of education and has come out to a conclusion that, yes, the virtual system of education has come to solve the many problems there is to it. Like I've shown to you, how can students be learning a calculus on this thing and still understand it? When this student will one day be a minister, will one day be a, 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 a president going to negotiate for us? Mr. Chairman, it is on this note that I want us to look, to look at a classical example of Shuha Yashehi in, in Somalia. This is a poor woman who has no money to even travel to the USA. But through virtual education, this lady has gotten a, a United States recognized United States recognized certificate in journalism. How did she do that? Through virtual education. This is what we are talking about. Virtual education, sit your home, at your home comfortably and still learn the, the many things that you can still learn here. It is never true that the physical contact is missing. It is never true that you miss anything. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much as well. Thank you. And so we also call on the first supporting speaker against the motion. Mr. Chairman, panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, the all dignitaries observed, co-debaters, ladies and gentlemen, the motion still is me. It is a common view that virtual education is the way to go in a fast-growing um, economy. 
So I am Dr. Zakron, the first supporting speaker of the opposition bench. And I'm here to do two main things. Rebut the point of the main and um, principal speaker of the proposition page, and then expatiate on the points of my um, principal speaker. So to my rebut house. Firstly, before I go to my rebut house, let me make this thing clear over here. The motion here is basically about traditional education versus virtual education. So in the end, we have to relate or, or draw back the um, virtual education or traditional education to how it will help in facilitating or to how to help in making an economy grow very fast. Okay, so now to my rebuttal. battle. So what do um, side proposition here come to tell us? They bring basically just four main points into the debate. So they talk to us about accessibility and the very fact that it is less expensive. And they also talk to us about impracticality and the use of computer skills. So on the use of computer skills, I find that very problematic. Why? Right now, we are not doing virtual education, but we all, in one way or the other, have computer skills. Why? We type our assignments and we submit it, them to our lectures for them to mark. And then they also talk about <laughs> impracticality, where they say that um, through virtual education, people will be able to channel their resources into other things. And I also find that problematic. Why? Because why should we take our contact learning and replace it with virtual education? That is quite expensive. We have to come up with other resources like very high internet connection. We have to buy computers and other things that are also quite expensive. So why don't we rather channel the resources into other things like um, our electrical problems that we have in the country and all of those things. So on that note, I think that issue of practicality doesn't hold. They also talk about cost effective, and like I said, in, um, in practicality, virtual education is way expensive than traditional education. Aside the form of education, that is quite less expensive. Individuals would have to get other things to help them in their education. So let's say a medical student, for example, that goes to virtual education. How then do we expect the medical student to partake in the experiments that he or she is supposed to do when the person doesn't have enough money to build a laboratory for himself or herself. So as that, we say traditional education really caters for, for that, for such facilities, and that individuals wouldn't have to bother themselves on laboratories or buying equipment to help them with their learning. So they also talk about lack of infrastructural facilities, where they said that there are no infrastructural facilities and that, that we can't accommodate people. And then they give an analysis of the way for that over 50% of individuals cannot be accommodated in LEAR. And I also, and I use their main point to rebut them on their law of alternatives. So we say that every individual has his or her opinion to choose the university he or the school he or she wants to attend. So I choose to go to university of Cape Coast, not because I can't, not because I don't like LEAR, but because it was my preference to go to the University of Cape Coast. So at such individuals consider cost and all of those things when making such decisions. Okay, so now to my main point. We tell you about how personal contact is lost in virtual education. So here yeah, in personal contact, we talk about socialization. We say that socialization that goes on in virtual um, Virtual education is just a facade, so individuals don't really get to interact with their individuals, with their peers like they want to, irrespective of online um, um, education, online streaming and all of those things. Why? Because, let's take for example, online streaming. The instructor has just two hours to cover a lot of aspects or a lot of objectives within that time. So the instructor wouldn't have time to ask questions, to take feedback. So the instructor as such will come up with other alternative such as comments box where the individuals will have to go and place their questions and as such peers or their yes and as such their peers will come to add up on what they 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 feel they need and even with that there's a little problem why because the facilitators the thing with teachers, okay, so the role of teachers is to mediate between um, individual, what they learn and what they attain, because there is broad knowledge base. And as such, the individual will help an individual um, learn things, don't let them fit back into the society. With this, we are proud to oppose. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. All right, an exciting news from our sponsors. 
We have Lexter Ghana Limited, producers of Yars range of products, giving us the opportunity to do our internship with them. So you can purchase any item from them, and then you have an opportunity to write your name to do your internship with them. They have bleach, they have WC cleaners, and they have washing powders. So for that sparkling white bathroom and WC, you can use these items from Lexter Ghana Limited. Can we have the second supporting speaker for the motion? Mr. Chairperson, panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, fellow debaters, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Norbert Agbomenu, the second supporting speaker for the motion. It is a common view that virtual education is a way to go in a fast competing economic world. First of all, the right to speak comes with a responsibility to listen. My opponent from the other side made mention of points which we find so ununderstandable. First of all, Madam Chairman, she said it lacks interaction and we are not able to build our skills of typing. It will interest you to know that these are students, they end up giving the assignment to the printing press to have their assignment typed for them. Where can they have these skills developed? <laughs> Madam Chairman, we are saying that a virtual education is not replacing the traditional setting, but it is an alternative to help aid accessibility to education. For example, when a woman sells at the market just to take care of the children, he or she has to go through stress to be able to raise up funds to cater for his son's or daughter's education. This is, not, this is not acceptable. Professor Joshua Labi said that I quote, in the launch of Lawel Open University College, he said, it is surprising that in this world, those with D8 and D7 and E8 are not able to have a, a, a admission because it's not because of, it's not because they're not qualified, but it's because the system does not allow such people to have access to such education. Madam Chairperson, it's of the view that we want to say that those of the view who are saying that it is a, it's a way to go are numerous, like multimedia. They are championing the cause of us having virtual education. That will help champion citizens in this country, which, will help, which is going to help them become better future leaders. On this note, let us all rise and support the motion that virtual education is a way to go in a fast competing academic world. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now call on the second supporting speaker against the motion. A round of applause for him. The chairperson, all protocols duly observed. My name is Senanu de Kouaja, and I'm the second supporting speaker for the opposition bench. Now, I will reaffirm our stance again. What we are saying is that virtual education is not the way to go, and that if anything at all, it should be a subsidiary to traditional education. Now, in this debate, we walked you down the memory lane where we told you about the historical antecedent of education and how adopting the pre-colonial traditional education system has been able to help us produce great scholars in the system. We also told you about the significance of fiscal contacts in learning and how we believe that the traditional educational system helps us to attain that better than the virtual education system. We told you about the idea of construct education, where we tell you that the purpose of education is to bring out critical thinkers who are capable of managing the challenges in the world and who are brilliant enough to be aware of and responsive to breadth of ideas and who have in-depth focus in their area of specialization. Now, we also tell you about the domains of learning, where we tell you that uh, we have the education seeks to develop the uh, cognitive, affective, and psychomotive uh, skills of individuals. Now, with the cognitive uh, skills of individuals, we tell you that we develop that through cognitive disputations, where individuals argue among each other, and they agree on one idea to be the ruling idea. We tell you about our effective skills, where we tell you that through group studies, individuals are able to learn how to tolerate each other, and it promotes healthy competition 
among them. We also finally tell you about psychomotor domain or skills where we tell you that individuals learn how to use their hands and limbs through practicals and through supervised uh, uh, works. Now, we move on to tell you about the need for instructors to assess the entry behaviors of their students to be able to mount relevant and uh, culturally relevant and matrilationally relevant courses for their students to, uh, to, to pursue so that it will help them relate effectively with these courses that they study. Then finally, we told you about the law of, of effect. Why we tell you that traditional education is very relevant for the beginner because it helps the beginner to articulate words. It helps to train their wrist so that they'll be able to write and write very well. It also helps the pros in education because it gives them a hands-on approach to education. Now, we go, we go on further to tell you that the law of effect, that is modeling, where an individual can even, through the admiration he has for his or her lecturer, try to be like the lecturer and grasp whatever concept the lecturer is giving him. Now, what have we brought in this debate? We thought about historical antecedents, we thought about fiscal contact, we thought about construct education, we thought about the domains of learning, we thought about the need for assessing entry behavior, and we also thought about the law of effect. Now, the chairperson, all protocols duly observed, we believe that with this point well explained, there is no need for us to replace traditional education with virtual education. And this is why we win this debate. Thank you. Thank you very much as well. A round of applause for them, please. SRC Hall from the University of Cape Coast and Simpa Hall from the University of Education. We've had some wonderful intellectual discourse right here, and I'm sure we are all very much thankful to the, the debaters right here. The Yaz intellectuals. Grooming great debaters. The Yaz intellectuals. Grooming great debaters. The Yaz intellectuals. Grooming great debaters. All right, Nanaba, what do you have for us in terms of our sponsors and the issues raised right here? Okay, so I am convinced that both sides have done a great job. Okay. That's my personal observation. And like I always want to give my personal notes on each, uh -huh. on each debate that goes on. I think that we can't do away with a virtual education. However, it shouldn't override the traditional education. Exactly. It's my personal stance. Okay, so on this note, we'll be handing over to our judges for them to give us their thoughts, but we take a very short break and we'll be right back. I love food frosted flakes because it's so crunchy and full of nutrients. All you need is milk. As usual, mom. 99 minus 3, 2, 2. That's it? Yes? 90! Wistura flakes has nine essential nutrients with no artificial additives or colors. Yes? Food frosted flakes is rich in vitamin E, B12, iron, high in carbohydrates, fiber, protein, sodium, and it's very affordable. Care for him. Food frosted flakes! Food frosted flakes! All you need is milk. Yay! Coach Gamfi, three variants Frosty Flakes, Choco Flakes, and Corn Flakes. Each bag has 10 mini packs of 50 grams, and each box you buy comes with a free exercise book. Hooch is available in all supermarkets and retail shops. Hooch Frosty Flakes. All you need is milk. Welcome back from that break. I must say that the Yaz's range of products is very, very good. Especially the panty liners and the sanitary towel. Wow. I know that you are, you are a male, but I will recommend the panty liners and the sanitary towels for all ladies. Because they are very comfortable. You can dare to wear white even in your monthly period okay. and be confident throughout the day. Okay. We thank Yaz for producing such great products. Fantastic. And again, they also have the toothpaste. And so if you have gems in your mouth and in between your teeth, make sure you use the Yaz toothpaste. And again, they come in different variants, the mix, the hairball, the total care, and the whitening as well. And again, we are supported by Access Bank, Retail Banking, they are the best, as well as Commercial Banking. And again, we are supported by Capital O2, producers of Living B. 
spectators. And so we're so much very grateful for SRC Hall from the University of Cape Coast and of course from the University of Education in Winneba, we have Simpa Hall. And again, uh, we allow our judges to give us their verdict. So once again, a round of applause for our moderators. We had another interesting debate. This time, there was a clear winner from both independent scores that were made. And the first judge gave one of the sides 16 and the other 18.5. The other scored 15 and the other side 19.5. So we have 31 and 38. And the winners are SRC SRC Hall. There were lots of factual and policy documents and reports that each side could have made reference to, but this did not come up. For example, particularly for the foresight, UUW, and that is Simpa Hall. For Simpa Hall, you could have made reference to one SDG 4, the Sustainable Development Goal 4, which is very clear and explicit about all inclusive education and makes particular reference to open and distance learning using various forms of technology and media, which is virtual. You could have made reference to the Africa Agenda 2063, which also makes reference to the capacity building needs of Africa, the need to enhance access in particular, and the fact that the virtual blended way is one of the strategic means for Africa to go. You could have also made reference to the continental education strategy for Africa. That also makes reference to that. You could have also made reference to the Ghana Education Strategic Plan Volume 2, 2010 to 2020, which also spells out very, very clearly the need for some form of virtual education. You could have made reference to the various ESPRs, that is the Education Sector Performance Reports, various years from 2012, 13, 14, 15, particularly 16, and the last year's report. That you failed to do. You could have also made reference to the gross enrollment ratio for the tertiary education sector in Ghana, for the secondary education sector in Ghana, and for the primary education sector in Ghana, which makes also reference to the fact that Ghana needs open education across the levels. For the winning side, we noted that some statements were made which were quite opinionated. They were not backed by facts or evidence. For example, to say that virtual education is not effective was not supported by any reference. That could be misleading. And also to say that the virtual education results in for assessment of learning also could be misleading. There are evidence for the purposes of the general public. There is strong evidence to suggest that indeed when it comes to quality of education, which is what I personally advocate for in Ghana and in Africa, there is some supporting evidence that the 
open a virtual system can, when done properly, build some quality into the process. And this is simply because, for example, in the traditional system, we go to class sometimes without even seeing our course outlines. We go to class without knowing what exercises we would be performing. We go to class sometimes in a situation where we have a 16-week course, we can have it all done in about, say, six weeks or seven weeks. And you can learn more about some of these advantages which Ghana seriously needs to bring into its educational system to enhance the quality. So these are just a few of the generic points that I'd like to make. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank Professor Agoski Alabi. Okay, so our judges have given their opinions on the matter at hand. And we congratulate SRC Hall. Thank you so much. SRC well SRC done for from UCC. A well congratulations once battle. again. And of course, better luck next time. They have and they are bit if also done very, very well. To come on this stage and argue out your case is never ever easy. So uh, we congratulate you also. You know this professor don't play. Been able you to put in. All of right. course. Sure. So not to forget that we are proudly sponsored by Yaz Ghana and then supported also by Capital O2 and Access, Access Bank. Bank. All right. So on this to thank you uh, very very much for coming and for supporting Simpa Hall and SRC Hall. Hall. All right. So my name is Nanaba Amwa. And my name is Edu Jemfi. We'll see you once again. Bye bye. <laughs>